Hello, I'm Gordon Lang, editor of DSLRtips.com. When you're taking photographs of waterfalls or rivers, you'd assume that using your camera's automatic settings would be just fine. But sometimes what you end up with is a result that's just lacking impact or any feeling of motion. Sometimes your camera will choose such a fast exposure that the water is literally frozen in its tracks. It looks like it's not moving at all. So sometimes deliberately introducing a bit of blurring can give a far greater impression of motion. And in this workshop, I'll show you exactly how to do that. In this photo of a waterfall using the automatic settings, the camera has chosen a relatively quick exposure, which has effectively frozen the action. The result's okay, but it's lacking any feeling of real motion. Here's another photo, this time of a river, again taken with the camera's automatic settings, and again the water itself has just been frozen in its tracks. Like the waterfall, this river was really tumbling past in real life, but you just don't get that impression of fast motion here. By using a longer exposure instead, you'll allow the water to blur and give a far greater impression of motion. So what you're looking for is some kind of way to tell your camera to deliberately use a slower shutter speed than it would in automatic mode. Luckily, this sort of feature is built into every digital SLR and it's called shutter priority mode. When you've got your camera set to shutter priority, you can manually choose whatever shutter speed you want. And the best part is the camera will automatically choose an aperture to match it, so you still end up with a perfect exposure. Here's how it works in practice. To switch your camera into shutter priority mode, you'll need to turn the main command dial to the letter S. Or if you're using a Canon digital SLR like this model here, you'll need to turn to the letters TV. Now that you're in shutter priority mode, you can actually adjust the shutter speed by turning a dial that will normally either be at the front of the camera or the back of the camera. The actual shutter speed itself will normally be shown either on the back of the screen or through the optical viewfinder. If your digital SLR has a screen on the top, then you'll normally see the shutter speed indicated there. The actual shutter speed represents a fraction. When the number says 250, it actually means your exposure is going to last just 250th of a second. That's pretty quick. In fact, it's quick enough to freeze all but the fastest action. So if you want your exposure to be twice as long, you'll need to halve this number to 125, which means your exposure will last 125th of a second. Now that is slower, but it's not slow enough to blur action. Now it's a case of experimenting to find out what kind of shutter speed will work best for the conditions, but if the water's moving quickly, you might find that a shutter speed of, say, 30th of a second could be slow enough. For slower moving water, though, or an even greater blurring effect, you'll need slower shutter speed still. Try something like 15th, an eighth, or even a quarter or perhaps a half of a second. So here's that shot of a waterfall again taken with the automatic settings. Here the camera's actually used a shutter speed of 125th of a second and it's effectively frozen the action. Now here's the same waterfall taken moments later in shutter priority mode and we've chosen a much slower shutter speed of just one quarter of a second. Now the water's moved during this exposure and it's blurred to give a completely different effect. Now here's that photo of a river again taken with the automatic settings. Here the camera has actually selected a shutter speed of an 80th of a second. Now that might be a little bit slower than in the previous example, but it's still sufficiently quick to effectively freeze that water in its tracks. Now here's the same composition taken moments later in shutter priority mode, and here we've chosen a much slower shutter speed of just one third of a second. So once again the water has moved during the exposure, it's blurred, and it's given a completely different look to the picture. The water looks almost steam-like, it has a quite dreamlike or magical appearance to it. It's also interesting to note that when we selected that slower shutter speed, the cameras had to select a much smaller aperture to balance the exposure, and as a result the depth of field has also increased significantly. So the grassy area in the bottom right corner is now much sharper than before. It's important to note though that as you reduce the shutter speed, your photos will become more susceptible to camera shake. If you're using a standard kit lens with your DSLR and you don't have any kind of image stabilization or anti-shake facilities, then the slowest exposure you'll probably be able to handhold your pictures at, we say the lens zoomed out to wide angle, will be about 30th of a second. Now of course different people can hold cameras more steadily than others, but normally as you begin to reduce that shutter speed below a 30th of a second, camera shake could become a problem. So what you need to do is find somewhere steady to put your camera. The most obvious piece of equipment to use is a tripod, but there's no need to lug one of these around with you all of the time. Look around, there could be a ledge or a fence that you could balance your camera upon. Or maybe even your bag. This is exactly what I did for the photo of the river earlier, balancing the camera on top of a rucksack. 
When you do this though, it's a good idea to use a self-timer to actually take the shot because that means your fingers won't wobble the camera when you press the button. It's also wise to loosely keep hold of the strap in case the camera falls. If your camera or lens has built-in anti-shake or image stabilisation facilities, then you should be able to handhold exposures much slower than normal. If you could handhold at say a thirtieth of a second without stabilisation, then you should be able to handhold at just one quarter of a second with stabilisation, and that could be slow enough to give the blurring effect that you're after. Whether you're using stabilisation or not though, it's important to note that from this point onwards, all of your photos will be taken at a slower shutter speed than normal. So once you've taken your shot, always switch your camera from shutter priority back to fully automatic or program mode indicated by the letter P. Photographing water with slower shutter speed is a great technique, but it's not just for waterfalls and rivers. Try it when you're taking pictures of the sea, especially later in the evening or early in the morning when a calm sea is lapping around some rocks. You can get some really nice effects with slow shutter speeds then. You could even try slow shutter speeds when taking pictures of water pouring from a tap. As always, it's just a case of experimenting with different shutter speeds until you get the result you desire. For a step-by-step -step guide that accompanies this video, along with many more techniques, head on over to www.dslrtips.com.